Hi, and thank you for tuning in to the Daily Dose for Spiritual Growth. We are continuing on reading through the book of Psalm together. If you have your Bibles with you, I want to encourage you to pull it out. We're going to be in verse, or sorry, chapter 32 today. And what we've been doing is just encouraging you to read a chapter a day, a portion of scripture each day, getting into God's word, letting it get into you, that it can seep into your heart and affect your outlook, affect your belief system, affect your heart, affect your mind affect your perspective. And so really that's what the word of God is. It's living, it's active, but it's hard for it to take root in your heart if you keep it on a shelf. And so I'm thankful that you're here today and hoping that you're opening up your Bible and taking some time with the Lord as you want to read and listen to what he has to say. Now, again, you can read it with me right now. You can read it on your own. I'm just going to highlight a few verses. Today we are in Psalm 32. Again, this is a Psalm written by David, King David, as we find him in the Old Testament. Not every psalm is written by David, but um, quite a few are. And so it's interesting just to know the authorship because sometimes it gives us insight into his perspective as God is speaking through him. But this, I, this is not a disclaimer, but I do want to warn you. Today we are talking about forgiveness. Now wait, before you get up, walk away, or click next on your app, I do want to encourage you that you have a past today. This is not challenging or condemning you to forgive someone else. We know a list came to your mind, the people that you don't want to forgive. Hold on to that. Um, that is not the topic for today, although you, you should forgive and work on it. However, today we're actually going to be reminded and challenged by the forgiveness that we receive from God himself and what a blessed gift that is. And really that motivates us. That gives us the ability, should I say, to be able to forgive others. Let's go ahead and read. We're going to start in verse 1 of chapter 32. David says, Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not count against them, and in whose spirit is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy on me. My strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Then... I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. This is such a beautiful, vulnerable, raw expression of David's personal relationship with God. He's talking about the intimacy of their relationship. And although David himself was not saved in the sense of salvation through Jesus Christ, this is pre-Jesus, we see throughout the Old Testament that he had a communicative friendship relationship awe of God. They had connection. And it's beautiful here as we can now look at this in the context of the New Testament times that we are living, where we do have the possibility, the opportunity, the privilege of having that same relationship with God with no barrier because of salvation through Jesus Christ, that now we can kind of interpret his into a whole even deeper meaning. What David is describing here, dare I say, is the forgiveness that we continue to ask from God for the guilt of our sin. If you put your faith in Jesus Christ, you don't actually have to ask for the forgiveness of your sin for salvation's sake. You've already done that. And the sin that you have committed, that you will commit, and that you're currently committing have already been forgiven. It's not an ongoing process of forgiveness in order to receive salvation. That was accomplished on the cross through that initial giving your heart to Christ. However, why then do we continue to have a forgiveness relationship transactional going back and forth with the Lord if it's already forgiven? Well, he talks about it here. It's to release us from the guilt, the shame of our sin. You see, God doesn't put barriers between us and him. Once we put our faith in him, the road is clear. But what we do through our own continued sin is put barriers in the way. And those barriers are that guilt, that shame, that discomfort with knowing that we're not honoring God with our life. And so when we sin, it's hindering us by us to connect with God, not from God to us. And so what David's describing here is that when he had this unrepented sin in his life, this unconfessed sin in this life, it was like a weight, a burden on him that was affecting his relationship with God. And it weighed on him. Do you understand what that's like? I do. You know, I, I have a relationship with the Lord myself. It's the best relationship I'm in. 
And yet when I struggle with sin, when I struggle with bitterness or unforgiveness, when I struggle with lying or lust, when I struggle with envy or jealousy, that affects how I feel connected to the Lord if I don't confess it freely to Him. You see, God already knows, but when I confess it, it's exposed. And now the Lord's grace and mercy can come in and free me from the bondage of that sin and the shame and guilt that I feel. I want to encourage you to take what David says here as an encouragement. Some of us as believers, we need to get back into the practice of confessing our sins to God with the clarity that it's not for forgiveness for salvation's sake, but it's for forgiveness for freedom's sake that Satan can't use that sin against you. He can't dangle in front of you that guilt, that shame, that, that burden that you have. But when you confess it to the Lord, now you and God can work together to remove it from your life, God in his power and you and your obedience. What sins are you allowing to burden you and affect your relationship with God when God never intended it to be that way? He gave his son so that you could have a clear path to him without any boundaries, without any um, hang-ups or habits left over. He freed us from our sin. But when we pick sin back up, we create a, a problem in our connection with God at times. You can find freedom. David here says, Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. And he says, Then I acknowledge my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I didn't try to hide it from you, God, any longer. Instead, he says in verse 5, I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. You forgave me the guilt of my sin. It's just a prayer away today. Some of you have been living with this guilt and shame over the struggles that you've tried to keep hidden from God. And God's saying, let the light of Christ come in and expose what's going on so that you again can be set free. Would you be so bold today to confess your sin to God and to receive that freedom and forgiveness of guilt and shame? If you personally don't have a relationship with God, you can do step one on this. You see, God sent his son Jesus to die for your sin. And you've probably been walking around with this baggage and this burden of sin and shame and guilt for a long time, but God can actually free you from that and forgive you from that so that you can, for the very first time, have a relationship, a personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ. And so I encourage you today to likewise, as David said, to confess your sin to God, but more importantly, to confess to God as well that you have put your faith in the power of the sacrifice of his son and ask Jesus to come into your life so that you can be his and be set free. God has such a plan for your life. He simply wants to have a relationship with you and was willing to even go to the cross to have it, would you be so bold as to receive that gift today? Hey, I want to thank you so much for tuning in, and I hope to see you again tomorrow for another Daily Dose for Spiritual Growth.